Hey everyone, I'm Jen Steele. I want to welcome you to today's practice. It is yoga for beginners. And I'm, I'm always excited to teach beginners because you bring like two things together, interest and excitement. And that means like an explosion of enthusiasm. I'm usually in a room full of people. I'm pre-recording this now. So I'm imagining all of you beautiful people, you beautiful yogis out there, just with eyes gleaming to participate, um, to learn this, this awesome um, ancient form of uh, self-care. And yeah, so I'm excited you're here. Um, whether you've done yoga before or not, um, or maybe you're just coming back to the basics, um, it's an easy flow. We're not looking to bend ourselves into a Gumby or in a pretzel or anything like that. So putting it out there, you don't need to be flexible to do this. You know, today we're going to talk a little bit about some things that you can gather to help yourself out in this practice today. So I'm going to hop on my mat and we'll just get started. Okay, glad you're here. Don't need my pen. Okay, welcome to my little yoga space. All right, I have a Yoga for Beginners video on YouTube up already. You don't need any of this stuff and don't get overwhelmed, just don't worry. But um, normally in a studio setting, you have all these great props. Um, you know, they, we have bolsters, you got blocks, you have straps, right? Can't always, um, if you're at home, maybe you don't have access to these things, right? So what I would like for you to do is scrounge your own house or your living room, grab a couple um, cushions, you know, pillow cushions, or grab a regular pillow, grab a blanket. I don't have my blanket here today. Um, yeah, you know, I've got one of those Mexican blankets, um, you know, Fiesta style blankets, and you can just roll that up and put it underneath your seat too. And you don't need a bolster, you don't have to go buy anything. Um, this is a yoga block. They're probably like five bucks. I mean, if you are interested in your yoga practice, um, you know you're, you're, you're hooked, right? This is like crazy stuff. Happened to me. First time I took yoga, I, that was it. I was in, in the wind. Um, but you could get these, um, you know, like I said, they're, they're five, five dollars. Okay, two of them, if you can, two is better than but one's better than nothing. Now, if you don't have this around your house, I have this beautiful box that a friend of mine gave me uh, with the own symbol on it. It's very sturdy, and I could use this um, as something to use as a prop. And again, we're not going to go crazy with them today, but I just felt like I should say it's good for you to try to have some things <clears throat> to assist you uh, in getting into a pose more comfortably. Okay. And then. <clears throat> We're not using a strap today, so no worries about that. But after class, maybe go out and search for something like this, okay? What does it look like? Looks like a belt, right? <clears throat> so if you have a belt, you could use a towel, okay? Um, you A scarf, I mean, anything that has some length to it will work just fine. But again, not using a strap today. But have them handy when you come on to that. I'm a prop happy person. I love my props because I use them for my own personal practice. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm going to be putting up four YouTube videos. I'm going to ask you first to let's get comfortable. So if you found a pillow or cushion or whatever, let's just come into a comfortable seat and we'll talk about that. Back there. Okay, have your stuff right up at the top of your mat. If you brought, if you've got a block or something like that. So I'm going to be putting up two more uh, yoga for beginners classes, um, and so that'd be a total of four that you could you started, and maybe you can progress to no flow if you would like. Um, but yeah, normally for me, I, I have props nearby. So coming into a comfortable seat. What does that feel like? What does that look like? Okay. Elevating your seat. You want your knees to be below your hips. And I know you guys, I'm tight too. You, your, your legs may look like this and that's okay. Prop yourself up underneath you. 
with enough elevation to make it a little more comfortable. And again, if you have things, you can place them underneath your knees for more support. Each time we come in, we're gonna be experiencing how to find this comfortable seat as best as possible. You'll figure it out. If this is not comfortable, you can certainly extend your legs forward or even extend them out in front of you. You be you, you gotta figure it out. It's your body, right? And I can't see you, so you gotta honor yourself where you're at. It's one of the, one of the things about yoga. We have to just accept what is, accept the body that you're in today, and accept this practice for whatever it brings to you. All right, if we wanna center ourselves here. It's hard though to just sit, right? So let's just move a little bit before we actually Close our eyes. Let's just bring your arms by your side. Just allow your shoulders to roll up and back, giving yourself permission to be here, be fully present. Then roll it in the other direction. In yoga, we're targeting all parts of the body. So we just want to notice what we're noticing. One more time, roll it in the other direction. Maybe taking some nice cleansing deep breaths in and then forward. Where do we get tight, right? Our shoulders, our neck. Yeah. Good, move a little side to side. And again, you can draw the breath in yoga. The breath is drawn into the nose, into the belly, and out through the nose. Now, that's sometimes a hard thing to grasp when you're just trying to move and figure this stuff out. But you can try, see if you can draw your breath into the nose. And then maybe just push it out through the mouth. That feels good right there, right? And just bring this into some nice little circles. And what are we doing here? So as we go through each thing, even sitting here just for this minute, right? You're beginning to lubricate the hip joints, the hip sockets, right? Going in a direction. Remembering to always breathing as we're moving. Good. Come to your center here. Take the hands and clasp them behind you. And root those knuckles down towards the mat. Maybe your palms come together to touch, but maybe they don't. Mine don't. And I'm gently just kind of squeezing the shoulder blades on the back. So you're going to feel your chest to heart space opening. And if you'd like, you can look up. Here's a nice, good place to take a deep breath in. Ah, and let it out, reach the arms over your head, and bring your palms together, and then flip your palms up towards the sky. And bring your finger, your, your knuckles down towards your head, and then push back up. Release as you breathe in, push up as you breathe out. Inhale, you can even touch your head and drop your shoulders down, exhale. Inhale, exhale, and flip the palms forward. So you're looking at your palms now and drop your chin to your chest and really round your back. So push your spine to the back of the room. Do it again, flip it up, breathe in. Flip it over, breathe out. So you're rounding your back. Inhale, breathing in and the shoulders are hugging back towards each other and out. Inhale, last one and out and release and then shrug those shoulders reach your left hand down to the mat keep firmly pressing down into the mat or the earth with your sitting bones pressing firmly down reach over <clears throat> and we're trying not to dip forward so if you need to you know open the arm if that's uncomfortable for your shoulder you know maybe here wherever your arm wants to go just try to feel a nice little stretch in that right side body, the rib cage to the lungs, to the side, left side, left lung, left rib cage, opening and expanding. Awesomeness. Even this posture alone, if you're not used to doing side body stretches, right, come into a twist like an airplane. <clears throat> you might feel that tomorrow just from doing that little side stretch. You forget you have a side body, right? <laughs> You're sitting up nice and tall. Try to have your spine be nice and long like a rod from your tailbone all the way up to the crown of your head. And we're spinning around that, okay? Way too often we slump. 
forward, our shoulders slump forward. <clears throat> this creates tension in the neck and it draws all the way down to our lower back. So posture is key here, guys. Okay, now just drop your right ear to your right shoulder. We're almost done here in our seat. Hang on there. Back to center, left ear to left shoulder. Still breathing again, don't drop the head forward. Inhale, exhale again, right shoulder. And just feel a nice stretch in your side, the side of your neck. Back to center, left shoulder. Back to center, look over your right shoulder. Back to center, look over your left shoulder. So over time, these seated postures, back to center again to the right. You may end up closing your eyes back to center and look over your left shoulder. But in the beginning, beginners generally want to look at the teacher, which is absolutely fine. I'm happy to oblige. Bring your hands just to the back of your head gently and lift the chin up away from the chest. So you're allow allowing your head to fall into your hands. And you feel the chest opening there, the heart center. Breathe into that. Take the opportunity and exhale. So you're just going to drop your chin down to your chest. Like you're holding an orange under there, maybe a little golf ball. And back to center. Just notice how you feel. Take a big breath in and let it out. Bring your palms together to your heart. So your fingers are spread, your, palm, your palms are touching. This is called Anjali Mudra. A mudra, just, a mudra is just a hand gesture. This is Anjali means heart. So draw your thumbs to your heart space. And bow your chin to your chest. So you're bowing to your own heart center. Kind of bow, <laughs> bowing, if you will, that you're going to do your best to stay in a positive mindset and not argue with yourself about whether you're doing this right or wrong. There's no right or wrong. There's just try. So take that pledge. I promise to honor myself today, <laughs> wherever I'm at. Okay, and you can come up with your own mantra if you want, all right? But just good to give yourself that permission. Take that out. It's gonna feel good to come off our seat. We are ready to rock and roll, right? <clears throat> so right away, come on to all fours, okay? Walk those hands just gently forward so that your wrists are underneath your shoulder or slightly forward. Spread your fingers nice and wide. And I want you to notice here, guys, okay? If you, like your thumbs come together to touch, right? I want you to turn them out just a smidge, like you're trying to open a jar, okay? And place them back on the mat. I want you to look at the eyes of your elbows. Those are the creases in your elbows. Okay, and I want you to try to dial them forward. Does that make sense? Look at them, they might be facing each other. Now to try to wrap them forward. And what that's gonna do is it's going to engage, like um, opening your shoulder here into external rotation to give yourself more space to move. Okay, so try that. I, I, <laughs> eyes, the elbows, you didn't know your elbows the eyes, did you? And then they look forward. Ooh, and you might be able to feel that. Feel that sensation. Now push the floor away. This is tabletop pose. You can turn the toes down in the back for a softer feeling. <clears throat> now I want you to really push the floor away and round and dome the upper back. And then I want you to pull the navel towards your spine just a little bit. Beautiful tabletop pose. You should be able to put a, um, a glass on your back, right? <laughs> Head is back. I'm going to go into some cat cow now. Very common way to warm up your spine. So push into the floor, lift your chin. Now drop the belly down and push the sitting bones to the back of the room, the tailbone. And as you exhale, pull the belly into your spine, look back towards your toes, push the floor away like a Halloween cat. All the air goes out. Inhale here. Exhale. So imagine your spine moving in here, right? It's creating space with the breath. Breathe in. Three more. Exhale. Inhale. And this is a good one to learn how to breathe with your movement. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. <clears throat> good. Come back onto your knees and shins. Now, if this bothers your knee, you can bring that blanket or whatever and put it underneath your knees. We want to support our knees as well. 
Take your hands to the back of your waist. I want you to just take your thumbs and sort of push down as you lift up here. Okay, it's kind of like squeezing your glutes together. You'll feel that. That's core engagement here. And just subtly push down on that upper fleshy part of your glutes and begin to lift your chest up. So feel the opening in the front body and elbows are hugging together. So you're also strengthening the upper back and shoulders and you're opening the front of the shoulders. This is moving toward camel pose. Take one more breath here. Enjoy, lift, and then exhale. Right back down, guys. Right back down to that tabletop pose. So here, building a little strength, okay? Lift your right leg up behind you, okay? And if it feels good to do so, don't drop the belly, keep pulling it in. If it feels good, this right here is engaging your glutes and your thigh. You can lift the left arm up. We're still pretty stable. We've got our hand on the mat, our shin and the knee in the mat. Keep the head back and lifting up, looking forward. Good, for five, four, keep lifting. Three, two, and one. Awesome job. It seems easy, but let's lift the left leg. And then the right arm would float up. Now you can do just one or the other if you want. You can just stay here, or you can just extend it behind you. Remember to do what works for you, but this is building strength in that leg, building strength in that left glute, building strength in your arms. Five, four, three, two, and one. And if things seem hard, we can do hard things. <laughs> and it gets easier. Sink those hips back, take the knees wide, Toes might touch or you can keep your feet wide and just hinge back towards child's pose. For today, I'm gonna to just say, come on to your elbows, okay? Bring your palms together <clears throat> and widen the elbows just a little bit and then bow your head forward and bring your hands over your head. This is gonna help you expand your wings on the back, your shoulder blades, okay? So palms might come together, they might not. Maybe move the hands forward and then come back and just notice what's happening on the back body. I can feel my shoulder blades moving apart as I bring my arms, my hands overhead. Now, your pose may look like this, okay? That's totally cool. Your hips might be lifted. Pause here to breathe in one more time. Fill the entire cavity of your body with your breath. And then as you exhale, come out of the pose. So a lot of times we come out of poses or we deepen poses on that exhale. Bring your knees back together. Good. And then extend your left leg back. Lift the left leg up. And I want you to take it across the right ankle. And I want you to look over your right shoulder. So another side body stretch for you here. Breathe in again to that left side. Imagine you can take all the breath there and anything that's tense, anything that's tight, you're washing it away with your breath. Come back to center, bring it down. Right foot behind you, we're coming off the wrists and really, just in a moment. <laughs> so if your wrists are starting to get tired, that's the first complaint I usually hear. Look over your left shoulder as you take that right leg over to the left side. Breathe there. And back to center. All right, walk yourself back to so give yourself enough room. Come all the way down onto your belly. Tops the feet pressed down. Bring your hands by your breastbone and just gently lift up without pushing into the floor into cobra pose. So it's here and you lift here. So the toes are on the mat, the hips are on the mat, and you're just lifting the chest up. So even my lower part of my ribs are still on the mat. And then let's lower down. Toes press, pelvis presses down, lifting up. Use the back muscles, strengthening the back. And then if you'd like, you can use your arms to come up just a little bit higher and feel the front body stretching. And then exhale back down. Let's do that again. Inhale, use the back to lift. Maybe looking forward, maybe gently looking up. Exhale, those elbows are hugged in by the sides, okay? Hug them in. 
One more, inhale, cobra. And exhale, back down. Super good for the back, for back strengthening. Good, curl those toes under. And you're gonna push up, okay? Hinge back. And I want you to lift those knees up off the mat for our first inverted V, downward facing dog. Good. Tell your feet here. Which means just bend one knee and press the opposite heel down. Look back towards your toes. Good. Bend both knees, press the belly towards your thighs. So I look like a V, right? We all look like a V. And let's just test the um, length of our down dog. So when you come forward, you want to come forward so that your shoulders are right over your wrists. And if you're, they're not, and you're really short like that, and you've got to walk your hands forward, walk your hands forward. And then hinge back. That's the length. If you feel really, really awkwardly long, then you can walk your toes slightly forward. But that's generally how we test it. Come forward to high plank, and you can bring your knees down. And then lift up to down dog. Let's just do one more of those. Come forward, bring the knees down, and then lift back up. Look forward at your hands. We're coming forward to standing now, so walk, walk, walk. Okay, bend the knees a lot. Bring your hands to your shins and just gently look forward. And soften your gaze, your neck, your shoulders relaxed, and just growing long in the spine. Again, you want to try to... Bend the knees as much as you need to to create flatness and length through the spine, like just like a rod, right? And then fold forward. Take your feet a little wider apart. Keep your belly on your thighs by bending your knees a lot. And then if it's accessible and you don't have any issues with your lower back, feel free to reach your fingertips down toward the mat or wherever, right, to a block if you're up here. If this is not good for your lower back, take your arms to your knees and allow, you know, the weight to come onto those knees. It's still just about lengthening the spine. It's all good. So whether you're, <coughs> whether you're here or here, or maybe here, elbow to elbow, just breathe. Breathing into the brain now, we're upside down, right? Head is below the heart. This is called an inversion. Slowly release. Again, walk those hands up to your knees and look forward. Exhale. And then inhale, sweep the arms up. And exhale back to your heart. Nice work. I'm going to face you. Okay. <clears throat> Not sure my... Yeah. My fingers might get cut off, but anyway. All right, here, we're just gonna extend the left fingertips down and reach the right hand up. And then again, let's just go into a nice little side body stretch. Nice and long, press into the right foot. And let's, let's, let's uh, move with this. Inhaling back up to center, exhaling to your right. Inhaling back to center, to the left. Back to center and to the right and back to center. Take the hands behind your head like we did earlier. Push the head into your hands. Elbows splay back, back towards the back of the room. Press into your feet. Press into your feet like you're going to shoot up off your mat and then lift your chest up and come into a tiny little back bend by lifting the chin away from your chest and pushing the hips just gently forward, supporting your head all the while. Not dumping the lower back, lifting the chest up. Good. And back to center. Arms by your sides. Sink right here into chair pose. Okay? So I want you to look down at your knees. Bring your hands to your heart if you prefer, or you can reach your arms forward. Your feet are about inner hip width apart, or if that's not comfortable, bring your feet together. We're not sticking our booty out, so pull it in just a little bit. Sink a little deeper, draw your knees back and bring the weight into your heels, okay? This is one that we can build up to to a minute, but I'm just sharing, these are one of the top poses to do to, to <laughs> fire up the glutes and get a strong derriere, right? Take one more breath, you can do it. And then push into your feet and come back up to stand. And exhale, hands to heart. 
chair is awesome to build in your fire. So turn sideways. I want you to take a nice big step wide on your mat. You might have to turn your mat to, to look at me. Okay, so do that if need be. And then take your feet wide, just wide enough. So let your wrists come over your ankles. Good. Take your hands to your hips like you mean it, right? Turn your left toes to the left. Your toes are pointing directly that way. And then kick the back heel slightly out so that your hips sort of come, so your belly button is shining at an angle, okay? Kind of towards the right edge of your mat. Then just bend your left knee. So all I want you to do, bend the left knee and create some resistance here for warrior two. Relax those shoulders and look over your right fingertips. Make sure it's equal, right, to the left. And we're not trying to rip ourselves apart. Okay, we're just, we're trying to remain engaged, okay? And we're trying to also remain calm, <laughs> right? Things are working, what's working, you feel this working, right? And I bet your right glute is sort of like hanging out. You gotta, you gotta fire it up. You gotta have it come into play here. Not a, we're not a, uh, we're a participant. We are not in the stands. <laughs> we're on the field, guys. All parts working together, right? That's what a team is about. Your muscles are a team. They're all team players. And we all, turn your left toes in, turn the right toes to the right. Drop the arms for a moment. So if you think about that, kick your back heel back just a little bit. Your shoulders are aligned over your hips, okay? Your toes are pointing forward, and just the knee goes forward. Pull that back thigh back. Really press into the outer edge of that back foot. And then add the arms. I want you to look at your right knee. And if your right knee is in at an angle, you gotta pull it, not pull it, but move it so it works towards a little pinky toe. Okay? Lay down the toes. So if your muscles are all part of a team, you want them working we want to know what's working in every pose that we're in. So and it keeps our mind from drifting. So engage that left glute. I can guarantee you, if you aren't, if it wasn't and you just engage it, you're gonna feel it. That's muscular engagement. <laughs> Good, take one more breath and you go a little deeper. You go a little longer. Challenge yourself. Come back, turn the toes, and do it again. Come to the opposite side, okay? And do that warrior two. Try not to put too much weight on the front, right? Hinging forward, I see that a lot. Back, reach that back hand back. Good, and just drop your right hand back. And the left arm floats up just for a breath. Dig deep in that left knee. And then back through center and come right. Left forearm, left thigh, right arm reaches up. Now for some of us, especially if you have shoulder impingement, this may not be comfortable. You can always take it behind you, okay? Good. Not today, but the blocks are sometimes available for us to extend our arm down to reach the floor, but that's not the purpose. You don't have to reach the floor ever. Come back to center, drop your arms, <sighs> breathe it out. If you're, turn your left toes in, turn your right toes to the right. You should have good length here now, right? And then extend. Breath in to prepare, and then breath out to reverse. Stay deep in the right knee. And then right into extended, extended side angle. So directly up, gaze is neutral. by just looking forward, or you can look down. Notice if your toes moved, your toes are pointing straight, right? Good. What's firing up here? Right glute, right thigh for sure. Yep. And back up and straighten that right leg. So let's just do one more on the other side. Turn your left toes, keep the legs straight. Keep the legs straight. Reach them out. We're gonna be doing triangle pose and you're gonna see why. So right now you see I have a triangle in my legs. We're all, we all have a triangle with our legs. Reach and extend your left arm forward. So let's just do that. We're not extending down. We're just reaching over the left toes. And then just bring your left hand wherever it goes. Let it just kind of like, wherever it goes, that's where it stays. And take your right hand 
and open, just slightly move the ribs back. So you, as if your right shoulder can touch the wall behind you and extend up. I'm gonna look neutral today and I want you to keep this left knee slightly bent if you have a tendency to hyperextend. So another triangle with my arm here, right? Yeah, triangle pose. <laughs> Some of the poses have funny names. Actually, in, in yoga language, Sanskrit, this is called trikonasana. Trikonasana, triangle. And come up, drop the arms, shrug the shoulders, turn the left toes in. Here we go again. Kick the heel out, right toes forward. Really good. Reach and then come back and then reach again and then just drop it down. And again, left hand to left ribs open and really try to grow long in the side body right here. So it's kind of like moving your shoulder too over the toes. Beautiful triangle pose. What's stretching here, guys? This leg's not really doing a whole lot, but keep stabilizing me. I can take my arm behind me to open maybe a little more. But I feel a strong stretch in my hamstring here into my glute, right? Good. We want that. Come forward, come up, turn your toes in. So keep toe heeling your feet in a little bit and then turn the toes out. All I want you to do is kind of come into, like you have a wall behind you, you're just gonna slide down. And your knees are somewhat over your ankles, so you might have to move around to make that happen. We're just gonna come into a goddess squat. It's called goddess pose. Bring your arms out like this, goddess pose. This is fierce, right? You look fierce, like, ah! <laughs> or like a sumo wrestler, so you're strong. And what's happening here? I want you to sink a little deeper and then push up as you squeeze the glutes, lift up, and then come back in. And inhale, squeeze. Exhale, sink. Again, gluteal strength here, guys. Let's do three more. Sink. Breathe in. Sink. Breathe in. One more time. Sink. And breathe in. Nice work. So heel your feet back together. And again, just keep doing that or you can hop them together. <laughs> I don't know why that's fun, but it is fun for me. <laughs> awesome. Shake those legs out. Guess what we're doing? We're coming back down to the mat. So yay. Just a few standing poses. Oh, no, I lied. I wanted to do one more. Let's do one more. One more. Uh, tree pose. I want to come back to tree pose. We, I introduced it last week. I want to have you enjoy it again here today. And then the next time I'll add another one on. A different one. Okay. So you have to come back, you have to come back next week. All right, so we're standing tall in our left foot and you're pushing down as if, again, you can lift off the mat and that's gonna engage your quad and your kneecap is gonna lift and it's gonna stabilize you, okay? Keep that, keep that little dimple in. Turn your right knee out. You can keep your toe on the mat for a kickstand, right? Don't lose that, keep the foot, keep it all fired up or you can take it to your inner shin Keep pushing down, okay? Hands to your heart. You might notice that I have decent balance, okay, in a lot of the things that I do, but I will tell you this. There's a little secret to that. Okay, I'm only five foot four, barely, and I have a size nine foot. <laughs> so, ah, if you fall out of poses, you will, I will, I do, it's okay. All right, bring that down. Nice work, shake it out. Push right into your right foot. And again, push like you mean it, like you wanna lift off, okay? And squeeze the right glute, and you're gonna feel your right quad fire up. Turn your left knee out, kick stand, toe stays on the mat. A little bit harder, bring it to the inner shin. And again, keep pressing and engaging, and even here, lifting core. And then it's your journey. It's just to try to have stillness. Balance is super hard. So make sure, look at something. I'm looking at my camera lens right now, a little light dot. And that's keeping me focused. And then the breath grounds you. Let's take two more nice deep breaths here. If you fall out of it, come right back in. 
where can you relax? Where can you release tension even as you're working hard? And release. Big breath in, reach up. And exhale it out through the mouth. Nice work so far, everyone. Good job. All right, coming down to the mat now. I'm so, so happy I didn't forget trees. Sometimes I just forget all sorts of things. Reach those arms up. And then exhale, arms by your sides. Just kind of dive down slowly. Hands to shins. And then we're going to reach our hands to the mat and step our right foot back and step the left foot back. Right, let's lower ourselves down, knees down, chest down. Roll up to that nice little gentle cobra pose. Again, wiggle around if you like. Come on down. Curl the toes under, come up. And we're just going to go into one last little downward facing dog pose. Lift your right leg up, bend the knee and open up that hip. Push the left heel down. Look under your shoulder if you'd like. If this is not comfortable, put your foot back down. And do the other side. Little hip opener. Rotate the ankle while you're up there. Press the right heel down. And bring it down to your mat. Bring your knees down. Let's come back up. Let's come back up to that nice little kneeling posture. Bring your hands to your waist. Thumbs back behind you to the lower back. Push down and lift, lift, bleh, lift the chest up. Elbows hug in. And breathe. Soften here. It's hard. Like right in, up into the palate of your mouth. Right? Soften. Take the tongue away from your, from your mouth. And just breathe into the chest and the heart. Nice job. Come on down. All right, I want to come on to our seat. I'm terrible at keeping track of time. <clears throat> um, I, again, if this is hard, if sitting is hard, um, prop yourself up onto something, okay? Or you could actually place something, I don't have it here, but a, um, a blanket or a towel underneath your knee if it really creates a lot of strain for you. Again, being, you know, if you're new to yoga, you're going to find that you're tight um, in areas you have no idea and you're loose in areas you have no idea. So you can sort of turn yourself towards this left foot and your right sole of the right foot is inside of that left leg. Just some nice forward bends. Forward bends are beautiful for helping to cleanse and detoxify the inner body. Breathe in, which is what we want. <laughs> we don't want toxins in our body. And then just breathe out. So I'm pretty far away from my thigh. You might be up here. Support yourself if you'd like, or you know, just begin to bend forward. If you want a little bit of a gentle twist, take your hand, your right hand to the outside of that left foot and just drop your right shoulder. With each inhale, you might feel a little, you know, lift because your breath, right, is pushing away. And then as you exhale, you can kind of come in just a little bit deeper. So we deepen in the exhales. The inhales are sort of like preparing us and creating space. And come up. And now just turn to the center. And I want you to bend forward and kind of drive your left elbow towards that left thigh. And bring your hand down and then reach that right arm up. Now, this might be good for you, or you can take it all the way bicep by your ear. Keep your chest open like we did with triangle pose. Keep your chest open. And then look down at your left toes and just imagine that you can like grab your toe. Yeah, look at how, how far I have to go. So, so I see a lot of people do this because they really want that foot, but that's closing the posture. Don't do that. <laughs> Should feel good in your side body. Take one more big breath here and come back up. Let's switch to the other side. Okay, so in, turn toward that leg, reach those arms up. Big breath in to prepare, grow long, and then exhale, reach forward until you go to the farthest extent. So that strap right, would be good here for resistance. That's one of the places. Where are you feeling this though? 
You may feel a stretch in here if this is tight. Your knee may even be up off the floor. You may feel underneath your knee with something there, if that might be the case. You may feel a stretch in your right hamstring. If you draw your toes to your shin, you're gonna feel a stretch in your calf and your Achilles. So again, having resistance of some sort is helpful. But for today, we're just gonna just feel what we feel. And back up. Take both feet together. Oh no, sorry, we're gonna do the inside, sorry. Bring your elbow into the inside of that right leg. Allow that right arm to flow down. Open up here. So you do just some four stretches. Bring the cross if you can. So in yoga, I'm okay with people kind of feeling a little discomfort, comfortably uncomfortable, if you will, but no pain. Okay, so we don't want to go to our farthest edge. Right, and back up. Ooh. Forward. One more forward bend. Inhale and then exhale. Allow your chin to come to the chest. So trying to minimize tension in the back, in the upper back, the neck. I'm just breathing. So with each inhale, you know, we're expanding and we exhale, we're contracting. So contraction, make sure you're emptying out all of the air as much as you can. And we don't want stale air stuck in there. And then imagine if there is anything going on in there, you know, any kind of negativity, any kind of tension that you're pushing out with that exhale. Just imagine that. Back out of the universe or the universe take care of it. You don't want it. <laughs> Lift back up. All right, then come down onto the mat. So we're almost, almost done with the class. <laughs> I hope you feel better. Oh, come all the way down. Ah, oh, just grow nice and long. Rotate your wrists, rotate your ankles. And then bring your knees and hug them into your chest. Roll a little side to side. Now let's just take our right knee and hug it in. You just place the sole of your left foot on the mat or if it feels good for you to extend it forward, you can do that as well. We're just gonna take the, the upper body stays soft and quiet. The lower body is going to turn to the left. So for me, my upper right hip is tighter than my other side. So my knee is very far away from the floor. So even though I do a lot of yoga, I still have tightness in some areas that just the way it's got to be. Yoga teaches us, though, how to work with those. Uh, bring your knee back in. And just pause for a moment. Feel the heat of that right hip. Just put your hand on it. Put your hand on the left hip and just notice the difference. It's just all of that good stuff, good flow. We're flowing blood to there, opening up the channels of energy. Bring your left knee in. Yoga teaches us, as I was saying, bring your lower body over to the right. So the left shoulder stays on the mat as much as possible. It teaches us how to work with our body, our limitations, as well as our, you know, um, you know, things that are easy for us. And we learn to accept it all. Because why fight it? <laughs> it is what it is. Come back to center. <laughs> Both knees in. Happy baby pose. Reach those feet up towards the air. Who doesn't like a happy baby, right? You can grab your ankles. So for tight people, if you're tight, this may be uncomfortable. You can grab your ankles or your shins. If you can grab the inner edges of your feet or the outer edges of your feet, practice that. And it's just that, you guys, that fantastic word practice. You just gotta keep coming back. Some of the stuff may seem really foreign. 
and you're like, what the heck am I doing? Why is my body like this? Well, as you know, my friends, <laughs> it helps us get into the intricacies of our body and our muscles and just release. <clears throat> Allow the feet to come down towards the mat, shake the legs out again, feel the hip points, feel how warm they are. So to that effort, if, which I'm going to do, if you have come to your mat and you took your socks off, you took, you know, a sweatshirt off, whatever, you can put it on in this, this final resting pose just for two minutes we're going to stay here, okay? And then you're, you're off and running, do whatever you're going to do. You got it done, right? Last class. Last posture, it's final resting pose. So you want to give yourself that time to let your practice really settle in. And don't worry too much. Um, I mean, hopefully you feel a bit more open. Um, and don't worry too much. If, if you can't, you know, you can't just shut off your mind, it's totally fine. Thoughts are going to come in and out in these two minutes, but just like clouds, let them go. Don't attach to them. Use your breath as the wind and let them pass by. Just let them go. Okay, so close the eyes, get nice and comfortable, nice and warm, nice and wide, maybe as wide as a starfish <clears throat> or a star in the sky. Shake the head a little yes and no. Move your head a little side to side. If you feel any pinching in your shoulders, you can just reach up towards the ceiling and just sort of sway right to left. And then allow them to come back down. Your arms can be overhead too if you'd rather. I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. And then for two minutes, I'll watch the clock. You don't need to worry, just stay there and be still. Let your body relax, let your body release or surrender to your mat. About halfway there, just be mindful if you're still carrying tension around your jaw or your face, your neck, shoulders. Get down to your toes. Bring attention to the fact now that you're breathing. Breathing in. Draw the breath in. You need to deepen that breath again. Fill it up. It's a nice cleansing breath. And then the exhale, you know, let it out with a sigh. Inhale. Exhale through the mouth. Feel that sensation of peace. Do it one more time. Exhale it out. Bring, bring your feet back together. Reach those arms over your head. Begin to bring some more movement into your body. Awaken the body. Newly refreshed. Knees in. Roll over gently onto your side body. Slow, 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 like slow motion. Come back into your seat. Again, maybe placing something under you. Awesome practice today, you guys. Sit up nice and tall. I just want you to get a feeling, right? How do you feel now from when you started? Okay. And the goal is to feel better. I will tell you, however, sometimes when we get stuff out, right? When we're working, we're moving, and we're releasing, and we're cleansing, and turning, and twisting, and all that good stuff, stuff comes up. So sometimes we might we might feel irritated or you know sometimes those things happen we'll be like oh this, this, there's just stuff that's coming up that has to come out 
So whatever you're feeling, whatever you're feeling is exactly what you needed for today. So I just wanted to put that out there. You know, what do you mean you get irritated in yoga? I'm like, well, it does happen. It sometimes it does. It's just, especially when we work at the hips, like just stuff comes up and it's, it's all good. <clears throat> you don't want that stuff. All right, guys, let's end how we began. Bring your palms together. Remember Anjali Mudra, hands to your heart. Bow again to your heart center. Honoring this practice today. Whatever it looked like, it was all good. You guys showed up. So honor yourself. Honoring yourself. And honor each other. We want to practice kindness to ourselves and to others as much as possible. So honor that. Honor each other. We're all different, but we're really all the same. <laughs> so good. So honor yourself, honor each other, honoring the practice of yoga. Bring your thumbs to the center of your forehead. Take a nice deep breath in, lift the chin. Big breath in and fold and hinge forward. And when I do that in class, I usually say namaste. Namaste is the light in me honors the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me, you're in that place in you. We are one. Thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. Namaste.